Welcome everyone to the marking out of a nice little picture frame here. This picture frame can hold two five inch by seven inch uh, photographs, but you can make it smaller if you prefer. Kits are available in the description below, as well as a link to my Patreon channel. Joining Patreon gets you extra videos, full length making videos, and full cutting lists. So we mark face side and face edge on all pieces so that our joints line up when we make them. This frame is made up of simple finger joints. It's a little bit of coping saw and sanding work on the decorative feature on the top. But everything else is pretty much basic standard woodwork. So just uh, marking one centimeter waste on the end of these two pieces. This will be the very top horizontal rail and the left hand vertical top rail. Keep the tri square on the face side and face edge to ensure that our lines match up as we go around. And always use the 2 8 pencil as it's easy to erase when you're finished. So if you're making this along with me, you can pause at any time to just catch up or rewind. I'm just marking away from the waist here now the thickness of the piece of timber that these are going to uh, join to. It's approximately 20 millimeters with this timber I have here. Just labelling all the parts as we go along. Top rail, left top rail. So just marking here the uh, width of the finger. I'm going to mark that all the way up around for the uh, male joint. So I've come in one centimeter from each side there. That leaves us approximately 24 millimeters for the width of the finger. So there's four of these finger joints in the project, all exactly the same. So taking your time with the first one, you'll have no problem with the rest.
the male and female are marked exactly the same. The difference is in the uh, way we process them. So we'll be cutting on the outside of the line for the male and inside the line on the female piece. And this should ensure a good tight joint. The joints don't work out too tight. It's the kind of project where it's very easy to hide a screw and with a bit of glue that should tighten up your joints nicely. This is timber stock I had bought uh, early in the year and it was kind of in the kind of damp part of the year and I was finding that it was shrinking quite a bit over the summer even over the few days of making this it um, shrunk by a couple of millimeters further So the top rail and the middle rail are exactly the same in terms of the joint size and shape. The top one only has uh, one joint to the left as you look at it. The middle rail has joints on both ends, but we can still mark off the joints in the middle rail using uh, top rail. Just flip it around to mark both sides. very simple project just one joint can create an amazing effect on your projects So it's faster to put two males on this middle rail uh, rather than one male and female. But it doesn't particularly matter as long as it matches up with the joint that it's going to be paired with.
but just make sure to number each corner so that they match up when you go to fit them later on. I didn't take great care numbering these and it caused me a good bit of headache trying to figure out which one was meant to go where. If you have any trouble holding and trying to spread out the wood like that, you can always place the wood into your woodwork device and hold it there while you do the tri square work.
So carefully putting X's on all your waste areas, making it much easier to identify where to cut and where not to cut later on. The cutting out video will be available in the uh, playlist. So there's quite a bit of waste on the end of that piece and this will also allow for some chipping of the wood there from the saw. So we'll end up with a nice clean finish towards the end. Now the top rail can again be used for the bottom rail. They're identical, they have one joint each. Just uh, measuring the width of the photograph from the edge of our joint to the end of the uh, piece. The aim is to get the photograph to be flush on the edges with the edges of the frame. So we can save a little bit of time on marking out by just transferring the marks from one of the other nail pieces onto this one. They all measure 10 waist on the outsides and they're all 20 mil deep.
So now I'm just going to mark the decorative uh, piece for the top. I'm going to match the width of the top rail so we can mark our widths from the waistlines on the top rail. And from there we can put on any sort of decoration we want. You can have just straight sides, angled sides. And for this one we're going with some uh, coping sour. So we're going to mark the curve. Cut out half that curve and use the part that's cut off to mark the other side of the curve. So we'll be able to mark half the actual curve design in the marking out process and finish it off while we're in the cutting out or processing video. So you can mark off one half of it pretty much by eye to whatever suits your uh, liking. Again, you could just do angles if you wanted to make it easier if you don't have a coping saw. And while I'll be cutting this out with a coping saw, ideally for an easy life you want to use a scroll saw or an electric fret saw. So the most important process, the scribing of your joints, using the lovely sharp cuts with your saw. Again, I'd recommend that you hold timber like that on the edge in your woodwork vise, just for stability if you're not used to it. And we're only pushing down here maybe a millimetre or so, just so you hear the crack of the grain. That way you know you'll get a lovely clean cut on your joints. That needs to be repeated for all your joints. When you're going across the grain, which can be kind of to um, figured out by the lines on the wood, you're going at 90 degrees to those. You can push down pretty hard, even on soft wood like this. But when you're going along the grain, that's across the grain there. When you're going along the grain, you need to push in very gently. And that's across the grain. You need to push in gently along the grain, like so, because the wood is very susceptible to splitting open. When you cut fire logs with an axe, a clever person always hits the axe along the grain. It's much easier to split it. Nice and gently along the grain there. So again, just match the width of the chisel to suit. 
just going back here to an 18 millimeter chisel to fit the female joint. Describe all the way around there, around the end grain and around the other side. That's pretty much all your pieces mapped out. Last thing we need to do is make some triangular blocks. And these will be glued to the corners of the frame. One, to give it extra support and to maintain the nice right angles on the frame. And two, these will be the background to which you can white tack or glue your photographs onto. But with white tack you can change the photos up anytime you like. We need about eight of these triangles all together. We just need to mark them on the top and the two edges. We don't really need to mark them on the bottom side because we're just going to be cutting straight down through. We have eight separate triangles there after we cut those out. Won't be an easy cut, but it makes for fitting photographs very easy onto the frame.